Hello, welcome and a very good evening. And join us here on the Thales train to Paris. It is a high speed train going through a couple of German cities, then crossing into Belgium and over into France. It is a very convenient way to get from my hometown to Paris, actually. It takes only roughly two and a half hours. And we're going to visit some nice places there. Some of you probably are familiar with Akihabara, the uh, electronics and nerd quarters of Tokyo, so to speak. And I didn't know that, but in Paris uh, there's something rather similar. So here we come out at the Gare du Nord, the northern main train station in Paris, and this is a look at our lovely train. And we had a very nice weather indeed. It was sunny and warm, uh, mid of April, around Easter. And here's the Place de la République, which is used for a lot of demonstration of political purposes and later we also saw one of those. But we go further along this nice big statue with, which was covered uh, with a Ukrainian flag due to current circumstances as you can imagine. And yeah, there were some cool people running around and there's of course a lot to see here in Paris. But we wanted to go to the Boulevard Voltaire where there are quite a few interesting shops. First of all we went to the Bandai Gundam store where you can get all kinds of Gundam, well, toy robots, mechs, fighter things, I don't know. This is a hobby that is totally alien to me but I find it highly fascinating because there were like dozens, hundreds of different styled mechs and things and you buy these sets that you can assemble and glue and paint and whatever. Most of the think already pre-painted or pre died at least. Um, yeah, and there's like so many different things and they're probably from mangas or things. But this is not the main attraction that we came for. So we went next door into the Geek Story shop, which still wasn't quite what we were expecting or looking for. But uh, this was more up our alley and there were lots of things to see here. A lot of video game related stuff like these candies here, Pac-Man, Zelda styled. A lot of comics, manga, uh, DC, Marvel, whatever you throw at it. Dragon Ball Z was very popular it seems, which is totally not my cup of tea. And we saw a nice uh, big Bulbasaur Pokemon and downstairs there were even more things. There were so many action figures of all the big franchises, be it Star Wars or Harry Potter or all the DC and Marvel comics. Everything was there. And in one corner we found some Japanese Monchichi, which we also had as kids. I think they were around since the 70s. And there was this nice big Han Solo statue, of course. I'm not sure if it, was, if it was for sale, actually. Yeah, but there was a whole lot of Star Wars stuff, like this uh, Baby Yoda waffle maker. Yeah, who doesn't need that? And if you ever wondered what the bum of Slimer looks like from Ghostbusters, well, here you go. I never wondered about that, but now at least I know and don't have to wonder anymore. And that was, of course, still not all of it that we could see. So next door we found another shop called All Geeks and they sold something like tons of statues and stuff. And in the basement there we found this nice Dragon Ball Z arcade machine, which I really liked, but sadly it was turned off and all boarded up. Right around the corner there was this massive collection of huge, huge statues. Those are like 30, 40, 50 centimeters tall and also very expensive here. 450 euros for Sony. Well, I say no, thank you. There's also a lot of Iron Man and uh, yeah, Stan Lee as a figurine for 290 euros. Oh my God. Well, I definitely won't pay that price, but I think some people will. And uh, yeah, for collectors, I think this is probably heaven. 800 euros for this Mario? Well, he is very cute and Yoshi is as well, but no, I don't think so. There were some smaller Sonic figures for like 50 euros, but still, I don't think I'm a collector for these items. But if you are, well, that's good for you. You will find lots of interesting things here. Next door was some shop which looked more or less closed down or maybe it was, I don't know, storage and office for the next door shop, I'm not sure. But a little bit down the road we found something much more interesting, what we actually came for. 
and that shop was called Retro Gameplay. And the name already suggests, yeah, we might be right here on track to find some good old video games and stuff. Outdoors, there were some newer things for PS3, PS4, I think, Xbox. But in the shop window, there was already a SNES and some Zelda games, some Switch stuff. Okay, that's new. Game Boy and the PlayStation 1 and some... Mega Drive cartridges. Yeah, and indoors it looked like we might find something here. We're actually looking specifically for Majora's Mask for the N64, and there were already some Switch things and Game Boy Classic and Game Boy Advance stuff. And a little bit further down the line, we found even more things. For example, these nice GameCube controllers. And over here are some very nice SNES games and also this very cool A500 Mini and a lot of SNES consoles. And this Game Boy light and magnifying thing was brilliant. A lone Wii light was also in there, but it didn't get much love it seemed. There was also a big Sega collection with 32X games and a lot of Xbox, classic Xbox games, very nice like this new inbox DJ Hero set for example. And even more stuff over here. It was so much, it was quite incredible. Here are some PlayStation Portable UMDs, which I think in Germany you don't find that often. And there were a lot of Sega Game Gear, complete in box games, which is very rare here. And all the Switch games that you could ever think of, I think they have probably the whole library in here. Prices were okay, but not super cheap. Uh, they were roughly the same as you would get on eBay, perhaps. Some things were a bit more expensive, but some things were quite okay. I walked out with Mickey Mania for 40 euros, which is for complete in box set, pretty okay. However, we did not find Majora's Mask. Next door was Manga Story, a shop totally dedicated to all things manga and comic. This was not our shop, to be honest. There were a few retro game things here, but well, we went further on. And yeah, as I said, there are so many things to explore here. And um, Paris is not super cheap, but around the corner we found this nice shop and it looked <laughs> from the outside at least much cheaper. And they had tons of Nintendo stuff, really from all eras. I think it was very nice that the consoles in this shop were all Put up there with the CRTs. We also saw a lot of N64 games but sadly again no Majora's Mask so we are out of luck here. But otherwise they had a pretty complete library of games and even complete in-box consoles. Right next door it looked a bit more shabby but I think those two shops belong together at least they had a similar storefront but it seemed that this one was more dedicated to Sega and Mega Drive machines. They also had quite a bunch of Mega Drive machines complete in box and a lot of more modern games for slightly retro-ish consoles. So let's go inside. But indeed even in this store there were quite a lot of N64 games. Again, no Majora's Mask, but a lot of French games by Infogrames like the Asterix series and similar things and also some foreign titles like Lion's King in German actually and yeah a lot of other SNES games uh, some in better shape some in worse shape prices were still okay but not super cheap quite interesting were the collection of watching game titles which are pretty collectible by today's standards if they come complete in box they can fetch a couple hundred euros well on eBay you might get them for a little bit cheaper, so the prices here were sometimes really, really high. Uh, depending on the condition, it ranged from 80 to like three, 400 euros. And there was even this uh, Zelda game that you will see in a minute, which was like 600 euros complete in box. I'm not sure why people are paying these crazy prices for these games, but maybe because a few of them have survived since they took probably a lot of beating back in the day when kids played with them, but so are the prices nowadays. Walking past some nice French grocery stores, we ended up near the Bataclan Club, which was the site of the 2015 terrorist attacks, and there's still a memorial there, which reminds us of this terrible deed. And we saw quite a bunch of French people playing boule and enjoying the nice April weather in Paris. 
Finally arriving at our last shop, which was called the Retro Game Shop, which was a bit hidden away and looked a bit messy on the outside and also on the inside, but it was chock full of games. It was incredible. There were so many Mega Drive, NES, SNES and even some exotic games. A lot of consoles interspersed with all the games, even some Game & Watch games here. Interestingly, the prices were a little bit higher than in the other shops, so we actually didn't buy anything here. But it was worthwhile checking it out because it had some obscure things. For example, these Zelda and Tetris watches, which are very nice, but also incredibly expensive. And even some more obscure console games like the Wonderswan Color, or for example here some kind of Neo Geo games which have massive boxes. On our way back we saw this nice little fellow, a pixelated alien, and later we will see more of these guys. But then we passed the River Seine, which uh, runs through Paris, and it's quite interesting to see what the people pull out of the Seine actually these days, which are mostly bikes and e-scooters, which are pretty common in the city. Together with this very interesting rendition of Bag End from The Lord of the Rings, which was also right next to the Seine River. And I wonder why it's there or what's the meaning of all of this. And once more we found one of those pixelated icons, a little alien with a flesh. And we thought maybe this was the place where Yoshi has his restaurant, but well, not entirely sure. But it turns out that there are a lot of these little tiled pixelated icons. For example, here's another alien. And all throughout the city you will find pictures like these on the house walls. I think they're similar to graffiti or something, street art. And uh, while walking around you can find actually in many streets and in many corners some of these. And it was a little bit of a game to hunt them all down. I'm not sure how many exist, but uh, we found quite a few. There were some references to uh, space invaders, to computer systems like this fold icon here. And yeah, I don't know who the artists are, but I think it's quite nice to see something like this instead of the usual tagging or yeah, graffiti. But that already concludes our visit to Paris, to the nerd and geek area of the Boulevard Voltaire. So we are checking back into our Talis train going home. But I hope you liked this little journey with us. Um, I hope you come back for the next video. Share, like and subscribe as usual. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.